Welcome to the library's first virtual Encore presentation from the local history series, Who Knew? The program today is entitled The American Freedom Train. Let's begin. The history of the Freedom Trains begins in April 1946 with a proposal by Attorney General Tom C. Clark to use a train as a way to reawaken Americans to their taken for granted principles of liberty in the post-war years. It was described as a plan of selling America to Americans. President Harry Truman loved trains and a proposed train that would travel to the communities in every state of the nation seemed a fitting way to share dozens of documents of liberty with the nation's people. The idea was adopted by a coalition including Paramount Pictures and the Advertising Council. The engine was named Spirit of 1776. Hollywood chiefly put up the capital for this traveling exhibit. The National Archives supplied the 4749 train with all the key documents. Its first stop was in Philadelphia, September 17, 1947. The last stop was in Washington, D.C., January 22, 1949. This photo shows Marines guarding the locomotive. Long lines waiting to aboard the Freedom Train. The Susan B. Anthony Club posing for a picture in front of the train. The idea of a bicentennial freedom train was conceived by Ross Rowland Jr., a New York commodities broker and actor John Wayne, after both men had been riding the Golden Spike Centennial Limited to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Transcontinental Railroad. What a great way to celebrate America's bicentennial, they thought, a steam-powered train to tour America. In 1971, Mr. Rowland pitched his idea to corporate leaders for the touring exhibition of American history without success. 55 pitches and 55 turndowns, until he met Don Kendall, then chairman of Pepsi. Within hours, $1 million was pledged from Pepsi, as well as $1 million each from General Motors, Kraft, Prudential, and Atlantic Richville. In 1974, three steam locomotives were selected and refurbished. A moving walkway was installed down one side of each of the 10 exhibit cars. 1975 came opening day, April 1st through the 4th, 1975 in Wilmington, Delaware. Free admission to 40,000 visitors, courtesy of DuPont Corporation. The last stop, December 26, 1976 in Miami, Florida. Founder Ross Rowland Jr. escorts the last of 7,000 visitors to the American Freedom Train. All three steam locomotives used on the American Freedom Train were painted in red, white, and blue paint schemes. Engine 4449, pictured here, was a paint design by artist Chester Mock, designer of the 1947 Freedom Train. 750 artifacts from 200 sources were featured on the Bicentennial Freedom Train. Each of the 10 exhibit cars featured a theme in America's history. Here are a few of the artifacts seen on the train. Some of the items in this car were weapons from the American Revolution, a Kentucky rifle, a British brown vest, a Hessian musket, and a French musket. Also a canteen, a cartridge box, and powder horn, probably belonging to a Minuteman from 1775. The Constitution, 
This final edition was George Washington's copy, written in his own hand. A, ninth, a 1756 edition of Benjamin Franklin's Poor Richard's Almanac, a match set of brass barreled holster pistols identical to the ones carried by George Washington, and a replica of one of two lanterns hung in the belfry of Boston's Old North Church on the night of April 18, 1775, to warn the town that the British are coming. Among the items included in car two were lunar rocks collected from the Apollo 16th lunar landing site, Alan Shepard's Apollo mission practice spacesuit, and a mock-up of the lunar landing module. Three documents that defined or acquired more than one-third total land in 48 continu continuous states of America were also shown. Louisiana Purchase from 1803, the Oregon Compromise from 1846, and the Gadsden Purchase of 1853. Also included was the seal and cord used around each document. Among the items included in car three were a picture of the New York Trade Center Twin Towers, a picture of the congestion of people and vehicles in the early century downtowns, and a picture of modern city with high-speed roads and many automobiles. Items on car number four included an ornate headdress of the Arapaho Indian tribe, now located in Colorado, Emma Lazarus' sonnet to the Statue of Liberty, symbol of safety for the homeless and the oppressed, and hand-carved Santos statues from Puerto Rico and wood carvings and face masks from Africa. Some of the innovative items included in car number five were a Remington number no. one typewriter dated 1873, patented and developed by Christopher Scholes, scale models of early patents, including a harvester, a milk cooler, a coal stove, and a brick machine. Until 1908, every United States Patent Office required miniatures of patent products. Also included are 1920 TV tube and a 1930 TV receiver. Items in this car included two postal appointments signed by Benjamin Franklin, a document in 1764 for fidelity to his majesty, and one in 1775 for public spirit. A September 14, 1784 edition of the Salem Gazette, an influential newspaper published from 1781 to 1785. Civil War medical instruments, including a microscope and a bullet extractor. They were the most important advanced instruments available to the doctor of that day. And Thomas Paine's pamphlet, Common Sense, published in 1776. The pamphlet urged colonists to consider the advantages of independence while it ridicules the monarchy. Some of the sports items included in car number seven were golf clubs from 1776, the year of American independence. Billy Casper's million dollar wedge club, Arnold Palmer's number two iron, and also old golf ball molds from the 1800s. A Heisman Trophy, the best college football player award, an Outland Trophy, Top Collegiate Lineman Award, Hank Aaron's record tying 714th home run ball and bat, the first NBA Championship Team Trophy Award in 1947 by the Philadelphia Warriors, and Bob Lanier size 20 basketball sneaker. Items in this car included a suit worn by Robert Redford in the 1973 movie Johnny Hooker, winner of seven Academy Awards. Jack Benny's autographed violin and bow, used throughout his vaudeville, radio, movies, 
and TV days. The Oscar, looking over Cecil B. DeMille's personal manuscript of the Ten Commandments. Judy Garland's dress for the role of Dorothy in the 1939 classic, The Wizard of Oz. And an Emmy, award for the highest professional standards of American television. Some of the items included in car number nine, the fine arts car, were a painting entitled Rocky Mountain Waterfall by Albert Birstead, a painting by Archibald Willard, Spirit of 76, now hanging in the White House, a painting by John Sloan entitled Snow Bonfire, representing social realism in early 20th century. Bronco Buster statue by Frederick Remington, representing the look of real people who opened up the West. Remington was a favorite artist of Theodore Roosevelt. Items included in car number 10 were Abe Lincoln's stove pipe hat, circa 1858, and the law books from the Lincoln Law Library. Microphones reminiscent of Franklin Roosevelt's fireside chats with the American people displayed beneath a late photo of the 32nd president. A photo of John F. Kennedy by James Weiss, son of distinguished painter Andrew Weiss. A photo of President Gerald Ford and his wife at the swearing-in ceremony, August 8, 1974. And Dr. Martin Luther King's Bible and pulpit reproduction evoking humanitarian brotherhood. The trail of the 1976 Freedom Train is shown on the map. The train stopped in all states except Hawaii and Alaska. The Freedom Train crew and staff gather for a formal photo, September 1976. The two locomotives and crew exchange duty for the final time. Steam engine 4449 is dressed as Santa Claus for Christmas 1975 in Pomona, California. Several benefit concerts were given for the train, including Mike Love of the Beach Boys, Omaha, Nebraska, September 23, 1975, and Johnny Cash in Tampa, Arizona, September 24, 1976. A photo of local visitors at the Brackenridge stop. Brackenridge was the 96th stop in the train's 138 stops across the nation. Here's a ticket from the Freedom Train when it stopped in Brackenridge on Sunday, July 11th. The train was in Brackenridge from Sunday, July 11th through J July 12th, 1976. The train made seven stops in Pennsylvania, including a special run through Altoona on the famed Horseshoe Curve. The staff and crew of the American Freedom Train still get together for reunions every two years, usually on Labor Day weekend. This year, the 2020 reunion will be in Tampa, Florida on October 9th through the 12th. In 1995, the train cars were scrapped in Las Vegas, a city not even visited by the 1976 Freedom Train. The three locomotives were put in storage to be used later. The Freedom Train locomotive 4449, that was the most photographed locomotive in the world, and a former Southern Pacific GS4 is the property now of the city of Portland, Oregon. It was restored specifically to pull the American Freedom Train. Now back in daylight orange, red and black, the locomotive is today under the care of the friends of SP4449.
The second steam engine, Reading 2101, was pulled from retirement for an emergency overhaul to pull the American Freedom Train and has now a permanent home at the Baltimore, Ohio Railroad Museum in Baltimore, Maryland. The locomotive went through three different pain schemes during the run of the American Freedom Train. The third locomotive used for the Freedom Train was locomotive number 610. It was a former Texas Pacific 2104 and restored in Fort Worth, Texas to pull the American Freedom Train in Texas. It ran excursion service for the Southern Railway for five years following du duty on the American Freedom Train and is now housed at the Texas State Park in Palestine, Texas. The number one selling song of the year was Don't Go Breaking My Heart by Elton John and Kiki D. Rocky took home three Oscars from the 49th Academy Awards, including Best Picture. The One Car Family gets a break with the 1976 Volkswagen Dasher. Pittsburgh Steelers defeated the Dallas Cowboys 21-17 in the Super Bowl X for their second consecutive win. And Jimmy Carter was elected the United States 39th President. Take a look at some of the average costs from 1976. Surprising, isn't it? These are some photos of Tom Shepler, an avid American Freedom Train fan and also a model railroader. He's from Pittsburgh and is part of a club that regularly exhibits their sectional layouts. The Freedom Train Liberty Bell was a bicentennial gift from the American Legion. It is a model of the bell on display at the Legion headquarters in Indianapolis, Indiana. The casting of the bell in bronze was authorized by the Congress October 12, 1976. It had to be made outside the United States because no foundry had the capacity to cast a bell of this size. When it was completed, it was shipped to Baltimore and then traveled to all 48 continuous states aboard the American Freedom Train for the Bicentennial, starting in Wilmington, Delaware on April 1, 1976, and ending in Miami, Florida on December 31, 1976. In 1981, the bell was placed at the Union Station in Washington, D.C. The National Park Service is the owner. In 2007, for the 60th anniversary of the 1947 Freedom Train, Mary Jane and John Z. Rowe produced a beautiful limited edition commemorative envelope and stamp. They arranged with the U.S. Postal Service to have them canceled with a special cancel in Philadelphia, PA on September 17, 2007, exactly 60 years from the train's debut at the Philadelphia's Broad Street Station. Howard Fogg is the artist for both pictures. On the left is his famous painting of the train by the Washington Monument. And on the right is the special 41 cent stamp of his watercolor painting. If you enjoyed this presentation, please join us on Tuesday, July 21st at 6 p.m. for our Amusement Parks presentation, another virtual Encore program from the Local History Who News series.